We have been officially selected to premiere our movie at the Holly Wild International Film Festival of Cinema. The what? These film festivals, they can make or break careers. Anything can happen. Lives will change. I am told there will be press at the red carpet. More like a red welcome map. You are the director, so you need to sell them. Stop giving me tickets. There's no reason for these tickets. These tickets don't mean anything. Rule of thumb, you should be able to pitch a movie in 10 syllables. I guess the movie is about what happens when your dreams meet reality. Kind of like those memes, expectation versus reality. I don't know. Oh. We're competing against some pretty impressive indie films. Brothers and sisters, misses and misters. Maybe he just didn't get it. Oh, you didn't get it. All that matters right now, winning an award, making a deal. Man, this is about to get real weird. I'm gonna set the building on fire. There he is. What, you late, Matt? You've been waiting I know, for I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Marshall, Jeff in Las Vegas. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Good. How great. are you? I'm doing great, man. I love this movie. I am so so stoked with this. I mean, I laughed. My cheeks hurt from from smiling so much the whole thing, you know. Because I'm been a film critic now for 26 years. I went to film school, the whole nine yards. So this movie's so inside, and I'm just laughing at everything that's going on in this movie. You know, I've been to Sundance, South by Southwest. I mean, I do them all every year, and it's it's just this is such a great. I won't say like a love letter to people trying to get their films made because I see so many movies a year and just I'm just want, I'm just just pulling for Logan, you know, because that's what it's all about. Right. So but Marshall, can you pitch your movie in 10 syllables? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I think I've, I've tried to do this little. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, film about uh, filmmakers take film to film festival. I, is that 10? I, I mean, Tread, tread. Hey, Matt. <laughs> What's your pitch? See it. <laughs> See it. There it is. Uh, it, so tell me about who wants to tell me how this came about. So it's like, you know, we want to make a film. We're filmmakers. Let's make a film about us trying to make a film to a film. I mean, it's just <laughs> it sounds like well, it writes itself. You know, the, I, I've been through um, that. There's a whole. Uh, montage for uh, the buyers meeting, you know, where you're talking to different sales reps and distributors and, you know, they're telling you, hey, you should make a movie uh, with a guy with a gun or a female driven thriller or a self-contained, you know, horror. And, and these, these are what, you know, this is what's coming at me. And, and I'm just like, I just want to do stuff that's fun and funny and relatable. And, and, you know, it seems like I keep being told there's no market for that. Um, but this is a world that, you know, I know very well, and I like to write what I know. I, I, a lot of my writing comes from some kind of personal experience. So, um, you know, instead of being, you know, joining the masses with those very popular and oversaturated genres, I thought we would make more of a finite resource, you know, in a, in a comedy about, uh, uh, about representing, you know, the, the film industry that doesn't really get represented. You know, being a critic for 25 years, you know, I do so many junkets over the years and we stay at the Four Seasons, we stay everywhere in LA and New York. And just the inside joke with, with all of us critics is everyone there, just like Logan, is a waiter, is, is an actor, is a director. And we used to like tease people and all of a sudden they go, yeah, come see my play. I'm going to, I mean, it's like, so it's true. Everyone in LA is working another job to be, to make their dream come true. So I totally identify with Logan, you know, <laughs> At the beginning when he's, you know, because I've been to those kind of parties, you know, where they're, they're sitting there pitching, you know, and say, leave that gentleman alone because th th this is their shot. You never know where it's going to come from. So, uh, you know, Logan, as an actor, did you have any kind of jobs that you had to do or, or pay your dues, as they say? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was. A, I was I'm sorry, a Logan. I mean, Matt. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. I, you answered it all. Okay. Uh, I was, a, I was a waiter for a long time. And then I spent, uh, a, about 10 years being a dog walker uh, in LA, which was a great gig because even on a bad day, you would show up and there would be an animal that was thrilled to see you. So you'd be like, all right, I'll go walk around beautiful Southern California for a little bit with these happy creatures. And that was nice. But, uh, but that was the same thing too, like going in, you know, I would be, there'd be amazing homes and houses. And I, uh, I had to, I watched dogs once at the Chateau Marmont. They, the family was staying there while their house was getting done. And they're like, will you stay in our bungalow for four days? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, that, I've been in that hotel many times. I mean, yeah. I can tell you all the junkets I've done there. What a oh, great place. 
you know, I really admire about this movie, not only all the inside stuff and someone who like us was in the industry and working with this, but just the cast. I mean, the, the casting in this and the timing, because I'm, I'm waiting to see kind of lulls or some jokes that don't work. It seems like every actor, it's almost like you guys are an improv troupe that just, it's just nothing. It's just, I love all the, the timing in it. So did you guys practice that or how does that happen? Or is that just a magic, you know, when you, when you get people together? Uh, it's a, it's just a combination of the right ingredients, I think. Uh, you know, you have, um, I mean, we built the foundation around Matt, uh, and and that's a great place to start. Uh, that's the nicest thing I'll say about you today. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, Matt is a um, main company member at the Groundlings Theater, uh, which is, you know, sketch and improv, and they uh, write their own material, they do it weekly, they do it for free. So they're just, you know, true performers and uh, they work their Phil butts. Phil Hartman so. came out of that. One of my favorite actors ever, Phil Hartman came out of that, of the yep. Groundlings. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, so so there's like seven uh, of our cast came, came from the Groundlings and, you know, there's a built-in chemistry there. Uh, Deanna, uh, one, one of our other leads who plays Alex, uh, she was on a show with Matt uh, called um, Clipped. That was a TBS comedy, right. uh, as was CJ, uh, who's Kyle the PA. Um, so there's people who've worked together in different capacities. So the chemistry was there and then you combine that, you know, with, um, you know, my experience, you know, I, I'm comfortable directing and I'm also a pretty good editor, I'd like to say. So I, I think like an editor and uh, I, I, I just never want to bore somebody. <laughs> so uh, I'm always just like, okay, yeah, that's the, okay. That's done. That's done. Let's move on to this, you know? So yeah, the lulls, I mean, we really, you know, without trying to cut too much of the air out to make it where it's like a vine uh, or, I guess a TikTok. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, we were very careful to, to make sure that, you know. Well, with a, with a comedy like this, you know, especially, you know, Matt, tell me about showing it to friends or family or the first time you showed it, because did you feel that there were laughs that you didn't expect or how a scene would work? Because you're really close to this material until you show it to somebody, you really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we were fortunate enough to have a friends and family screening uh, before the pandemic hit. So we got to show this thing that we had been working on. And, you know, when we filmed it, it was a really small crew and it was a, a pretty big cast, but like, it felt like a really, really tight group. And so it felt like we were in this little bubble. Um, and then when we got to show it, I mean, we had a, there was a, a ton of people, a ton of friends and family, because everybody got to invite people. And it was awesome. I mean, it was the experience you would hope to have after spending so much time on and energy on a project. And, uh, there were, yeah, there were way like huge laughs in, in places that I thought were funny, but I didn't know if it was just my friends and I laughing, you know? So it was, it was really validating and really exciting and uh, just the best to be able to share it with people and, and have it go over so well. Well, I was the biggest, I'm one of the biggest laughers. You know, I was laughing through the whole thing. And uh, Marshall, tell me about finding that mountain town. I want to visit that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Um, well, I, I visited there. I've, I've been there just to a cabin uh, by itself, but I also went to the Idlewild uh, International Film Festival of Cinema. Uh, is it called that? I think um, so that was, you know, one of the motivations to, to uh, our uh, to the movie. I mean, you know, I've been to festivals for 15 years, uh, all over the country, uh, big and small. So um, I have a healthy foundation of things to pull from for this movie. But I think that was one of the last festivals where I was just like, we should do a movie about a festival and do it here. Um, so yeah, it was, it was lo love shooting there. Great, great casting. But I have to say, Will Sasso is one of my favorites, you know, and he just comes on, he just makes the movie, man, he commands everything, doesn't he? Tell me about mm -hmm. working with him. It's, it's another guy that's, I'm sure does a lot of improv. So how much improv did you let them, the actors kind of like, uh, Feel, them, feel their scenes or did you stick to the script? You know, I think we worked really hard on the script, uh, Paul, Alan Cope and I, um, and I think we had a very great plan. So I think everybody kind of brought that to start. And then when we had a couple and we got in the flow of it, you know, we branch off a little bit. I mean, everybody could always elevate, uh, but I just wanted to make sure we stayed on track for the story and stuff like that. Uh, Will will give you, uh, you know, more than you need. And I think it's your job to, protect him and make sure that, you know, you don't use everything. So people overstay their welcome, but like, he's just, you know, he's just constantly elevating. But I would say that about the whole cast, really. I think everybody's always looking for opportunities to, 
to elevate. And that's, that's something you get out of, you know, people who do their own weekly sketches, you know? And Matt, I've spent a lot of my years on red carpets. I can't tell you how many, especially at film festivals. So you're seeing in that one, I've been next to reporters. There's a difference. I'm a film critic and there's entertainment reporters. They're very different animals. And a lot of entertainment reporters have no idea what your film is or they sit there and stick in the mic in your face. And the rest of us are like looking, going, you gotta be kidding me. How'd they get there? How could they not even read the synopsis or something about the movie? So that whole scene about the little step and repeat, I was dying. That was hysterical. Yeah, I love that scene. And that's uh, Patty Guggenheim, who's also a groundling, uh, is so funny in that. And uh, just, she's she's great. That, that was such a blast. And and yeah, that's that's another one of those moments that uh, hits a little too close to home for sure. <laughs> Why don't you just show up to the groundlings and go, hey, he wants to be in my movie? And just, <laughs> I, did, I tried to get as many as I could. I was like, let's go, let's go. And Who's going to say like, no, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've also been seeing shows there for years. So I'm always kind of quietly in the back taking mental notes of like who I really like and, and want to work with. Uh, so yeah, I would pitch somebody to Matt or ask him who he thinks. And, you know, we'd work together a little bit on that. Yeah. Uh, but and what you don't see is, is during, you know, a, a lot of these scenes, but especially the, the step and repeat. I mean, the way that that place is, uh, position to the main road in Idaho, like there's a very like tr high traffic road, what, 12 feet away? I mean, it was very close and just noisy and they had to do takes in between, you know, big trucks going by. So there's so much chaos, uh, uh, but I guess maybe that helps, I don't know. Big entourage of characters. And if I had to choose my favorite, I know it's difficult. The guy who played the Swedish DP, I just thought he was my favorite. <laughs> yeah that's a uh, Laird Macintosh also yeah. a grounding yeah yes oh of course you know but he was my favorite every time he, he just cracked me up the most you know I'm telling you uh yeah. and, and also he, uh, uh, go ahead I was saying he he, he uh, like like I don't know this is not a, a pitch for the groundlings but like all of them they're like they really take pride in their characters so you know he was really just like about the look and about you know how to how to play like we really got into the weeds on all that so everybody was, seemed polished you know yeah. what i mean nobody seemed like this was their first film no one seemed like they didn't know what they were doing it seemed like a well-oiled machine that's the only thing i could think of it just you know the synergy that was going on it really jumps off the screen thank you yeah that's uh, awesome and finally you know i kind of take uh, you know take it personally i started out as a pa you know so we're not pos's by the way so i'm just i took offense <laughs> to that because I did a lot of getting coffees and cream and I call them, you know, C CNS guy, cream and sugar, you know, and, yeah. you know, but that's where I paid my dues. You know, I was going through film school, the Nevada film registry, you know, I did so much PA work, you know, and I felt bad for that guy, but hey, he won the raffle, right? Yeah. Yeah. He won the <laughs> raffle. He, you know, he, he, he wins in the end too. I mean, I, I would say most people start with some kind of PA job. I mean, you're, you know nothing when you're getting up there. So what kind of real responsibilities are they going to give you? And then, you know, you, you work your way up. Uh, and, and so I have, uh, they're, they're so necessary and vital. And, and uh, I hope it wasn't taken like I don't appreciate that. Oh, no, just, no, no, no. It was what, you know, it is what it is. No, we get beat up. That's the whole point. Yeah. You know, if I always, I'm one of those people that you got to pay your dues, you know, because you can come back and, and say, look, I did all this like that. We made films too ourselves, you know, some of the most ridiculous situations and everything like that growing up. So uh, this was just a love letter to filmmaking and film festivals. It was such a great time. Uh, Marshall, and Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. I enjoyed it immensely. And uh, come to Vegas, man. We'll talk again. We'll come visit and we'll have some fun. I can't awesome. wait to get to Vegas after this year of quarantine. I'm just like, I just want to go to Vegas for some reason. And just yeah. kind of like Everybody's coming here. Yeah, everybody's coming here right now. It's crazy. But thank you both for joining me today and good luck with Film Fest. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you for watching. Thanks for having us. Right.